Hello and welcome to the Simply Free Little Talk. I want to thank you as your host, Free Little, today on Galveston Feature. I'm excited because this young man is extremely talented. And in our brief conversation, of course, I knew that he was a former football player at Bow High School. Anyone knows Bow High and Galveston, we, we just think we're the best all the way around. But I will say their class was phenomenal in football. They were all stars. So without further ado, the artist of Galveston, Galveston's own Eddie Fowler, who is Eddie's painting and portraits. And we're going to hear a lot about what he's doing. Host, hold just a little second. I'm going to bring him in. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Eddie. How you doing? <laughs> Hopefully everybody tuned in because I did share everything you sent me. It was oh. so so. Hopefully, my friends and everything. Uh, yes, bro, man, Reggie, bro, man, tune in. Hopefully, he will tune in and uh, yes. talk stuff about me later. But okay, well, I pray that everyone. I I talked to Cooney today. He had called, and I said, you know, I'm gonna interview you, boy, because they call you Tuffy, right? They call me Tuffy. That's it. Everybody in Galveston. Let me say this for those that's in other states. Get ready. Get ready. Y'all know me by free, but it's it's Fifi and Galson. You come here saying free, you have half the island going, who, who, who is who? that? <laughs> so so do, don't y'all call me that. <laughs> no, they, they can't do that. <laughs> but it's okay for those that's B-O-I's and those that's been on the island. We all have nicknames. So you are amazing. Let me say that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Holy man, God, the artwork you're doing. Um it's it's being seen all over now. You're Thank putting you. us on the map. <laughs> Galveston I'm, on the map I'm, again. It, <clears throat> I mean, well, you know, it's constant work. I'm yes. constantly working at it, constantly trying to trying to get better. I'm a student. Yeah. So wow. I teach art. I'm a student still at heart. So I'm still yes. up tips and, and and you know, learn some stuff myself. Mm -hmm. so, I, I'm no genius. I'm just a hard worker. That's it. I love that. Well, your hard work has paid off because you are right now. Currently, you have three shows, the solo show. You have one that's a dual show. And I'll let you explain all those. And then you have one that is is currently in Houston as well. But it's going to leave that area. Right. That gallery. Yeah. So it's going to be still in Houston, but it's going to the glass sales. Uh, it's going to the glass sales school of art. Which is where I also work at the Glass Air. I teach a portrait class at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. Okay, but, okay. But, but the <laughs> show is called Citywide. And Citywide is a biannual African American show that's held. Uh I, I mean, so it starts off at Texas Southern, but then mm -hmm. it but then it makes its way over to the Glass Air School of Art. Yeah. All right. I, I love it. Well, let's go back. Let's take it back some. You okay. and your lovely wife, Patricia, have been married how many years now? We've been married going on 35 years. Wow. Um, and uh, we've been together almost 40 years. That's a blessing. Right? Everybody, they knew. They all know. If, <laughs> if, if you're in Galveston and yeah. know me, you will probably know her as well. So we've been Absolutely. hanging I've never seen you guys alone. I mean, seriously, over the years, even coming back, I was like, if I see you guys anywhere, it's always too. And it's so beautiful to me. But what I want to go back to also, and congratulations, let me give you guys a blessing on that because many people need to see that example of love. So to God be the glory on that. But your, your gift and talent, when did you recognize that you really had this gift? Well, I've always done art. Right. I, I mean, any artist would tell you it's it, you're really born with it. So mm -hmm. as early as three or four years old, wow. doing things, drawings of muscle man, drawings of spaceship, anything, you know, yeah. you do anything as a kid. And uh, I think in the eighth grade with Mr. Scott, uh, okay. uh, kind of, you know, he pushed me to kind of do some things. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I started doing little drawing portraits, and I would draw Bruce Lee. 
Uh, you know, bro, bro, man, and I were huge martial arts fans. Oh and, wow! And we did that. For, well, I did. I I drew Bruce Lee because of all that. But the real when I really got into it was in high school. Was late sophomore year. Wow. Me and some other classmates were in Mr. L.T. Gordon class, and we were talking a bit too much. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he got in trouble. And so he would tell us, "I will see who will get the last laugh." So, the, so, so what he did was he put me in the cafeteria by myself, and I created three paintings. Three really good paintings, and that opened my eyes. So I started doing portrait commissions when I was in high school for 20 bucks. Whoa. 20 bucks. And that was a lot of money for me. Yes, it was. And me. But but that's mm -hmm. when that actually started. Was in was in high school. Mr. LT Gordon. Uh, uh he was the one that actually uh, uh pushed me to it, it um, no, I, was worse. I, I actually to believe that I could do it. Believe that 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 makes a difference, also. Yeah, yeah, because you know you always. I mean, the talent was there, but uh, but his his motivation and 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 uh, his drive to really mm -hmm. and then to get me by myself. So once he showed me that, it was. I mean, that was it for me after that. That was it. <laughs> That was, that was it. Wow. If only we would instill that in others so much and push them. We see something in them and do like he did. Just put you by yourself and allow you to go. Exactly. And it surprised, your, it surprised you. It surprised me because uh, I, uh, well, I had the passion for it, but because I was playing football and then I had friends in the class. You know, football, art kind of, uh, art wasn't on the top of the list back then it was football yes big football players as i mentioned at the top of the show yes Huge. yes so that so i would watch and you and i talked a little bit up about this offline but i would i would see you know besides israel israel martin as i told okay. you was the best okay. poker that i've ever seen <laughs> But there was also wow. flaws mm -hmm. and Woodard. Mm. These very, the Woodard girls, yes. but Tina was very talented. And then also Mark Laws, I always, yes. my, all the way from Carver, mm. you know, only to every school that we went to, uh, uh, Mark was always there and uh, he, he was just so, so talented. Yes, I recall, wow. But you are also, you're in a class by yourself. Let me share this with the audience that I said to you in, in a text message, in a message. I said, Eddie, your work is lifelike. That's what drew me one day. I was just surfing through the pages and I saw uh, Lord Grayson's. And I had to say, is this a photo? <laughs> is this the, the draw? You made it so lifelike. I couldn't tell the difference. And that's when I said, this is true art. This is art. This is an artist that's going somewhere. And so I'm so honored that you said yes to come on and to share what you just shared with us, that this has been a passion since a kid. The, the gift was on the inside of you, but your focus was football. But yes. that day that the light bulb came on, wow, that's the pivot. That was the day that it kind of turned you around. Exactly. Wow. exactly. It was Mr. L.T. Gordon mm -hmm. that picked it off for me. Wow, that's amazing. I, I'm ever thankful to him for that. Mm. Yes, and I'm sure you are. <laughs> so I hope he's watching this, you know. Yes, I, I pray so. Someone let him see this. Yes, share. Wow. So share with us exactly the the three exhibits that's currently going on. Explain it as you explain it to me, to the audience, so they'll know where they can go and see your artwork for themselves. <laughs> okay, so if you're in Houston, they all are in Houston. Mm -hmm. The oh, first yeah. is my solo art show that is at the Houston Museum of African American Culture. 
and uh, and uh, a short for HMAC. HMAC. Uh, and uh, there's about 20 pieces there, you know, that's on the exhibit. They are all paintings. And uh, those works are about everything that I do. It's about trying to spread positivity. Yes, come try, on. Mm. Try to push the narrative uh, of, 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 think, of, of just being positive. Yes. You know, and uh, uh, because we've had enough negative. Oh, come on, speak. In, in the world, in our community, wow. in the household, where I just want to create some art that everybody can look at. And uh, whether, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a painting or words on the painting, everything, which, you know, which is what I use sometimes yeah. is I will add quotes and different stuff, you know, by famous people, you know, not just to spread positivity that way, but to also um, uh, uh, let the younger generation look up some of these older, these posthumous, mm -hmm. these heroes. Yes. Uh, uh, that I've grown up, that, that, that I've grown up thinking about. So that particular show will be up at HMAC until October mm -hmm. 1st. October 1st. So we need to get there. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And if you if you're not busy, which I put it on uh the Facebook and Instagram, on August the 20th, I will be doing a live demonstration at HMAC. Okay. From, we need to make that guys. From 12 to 4. From 12 okay. to 4, August the 20th. That's a Saturday. Okay. So, so I, I will be there painting a line. And so Live painting. That's the first show that I'm in, and uh, and so then the and that show is is curated by Romeo Clay Robinson, uh, uh, that, who's a good who's a good art friend of mine. Yes, I'm in a duo show with him, mm. on the Rosso Gallery, that's on Spring Street. In it, so uh, it's in Saw it's off of Sawyer Yards, Spring Street. And so that show is up until only until um, August the fourteenth, okay. but uh, but we're doing an August uh, we're doing an artist talk. Okay. August the fourteenth as well. We haven't gotten the time yet, but I'll post it. So whenever Please the time, time is there, I, I I will spread that time as well. Uh, so it's. Yeah. So yeah. So Romeo and I. So I have drawings there, but Romeo has gorgeous paintings there. So you get a chance to see two separate artists. Okay. You know, uh, 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 think about art in the same in the same way. So we just meet. It's called unfinished legacies. Unfinished That's legacies of that show. On uh, yes, yes, uh huh. So that particular show is called Unfinished Legacy, and uh, mm -hmm. the third show. I am in a group show that's at Texas Southern called Citywide. It's a biannual show that you jury in, uh, mm -hmm. and and so it's currently at Texas Southern, but it's probably going to be moving to the Glass Cell. Yes. Probably mid August. So the glass sale is right, it's on Montrose. It's right across the street from the Fine Arts Museum. I mean, so it's very easy to find the parking, you know, underneath. And uh, so you could you could visit that show and then see the museum <laughs> as well. They have three buildings. So yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of what your work is. And, and like I said, it was so befitting to bring you on the show so that others, especially Galveston and Galveston County, can see what we have in you to Thank support you. you, to encourage you to produce more. Like I, I mentioned earlier, the painting that I saw was still so lifelike. I was like, I couldn't tell the difference. And it was, that Texas Southern. It was and that's that Texas Southern. It's it's. Wow. it's so that painting is is, uh, is in. So yeah, so it's at Texas Southern. It's in the Citywide show. It won second place for me, by the yes. way. Yes. Now I did. Congratulations. Now I did know Thank that, and I I did send a congratulatory uh, response to 
the date that I saw it posted on your page. And I was like, that's awesome, which I totally agree that you should have won because it's beautiful. It's well, all of your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very talented artist. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've, I've, I've been very lucky to show with some very, very talented guys. Uh, and and then I could name a whole bunch of them that's in the same show with me that I've been friends with the past few years. Yeah. And so. But you yeah. have always been very humble like that. You you mentioned Brother Man, that's Reginald Ballad, guys. He played football with him years ago. But go ahead and tell him who is, well, you know Brother Man, but tell him why. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> Reggie and I, we started hanging out really in mm -hmm. the at Austin Middle School, but but I knew him from Carver. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Little kid. But bigger than everybody when he was at <laughs> elementary. He was well. <laughs> but no, but no, but no, but our, but our connection really came much so once we got to Austin Middle School, mm -hmm. great, and we both loved karate. Now, I'm, I'm a black belt in karate. I studied, wow. I studied karate under David Yeamans, and I also studied with John Senegal. And I don't know if you knew Romel Paul. Yes, definitely. That, that was that was my buddy. So John Senegal, yeah. Cookie. I you know, remember all of those guys. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, so we used to go over and help Romel. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, judge tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but Reggie and I used to go to the Martini and see martial arts movies all the time. All so, the time. Wow. Um, uh, uh, we more like we not we're not best friends. We are actually brothers. Yes. Well, I From, can believe that. Yes. And uh, we talk almost daily. You know. Oh. Yeah. 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 As brothers should and encourage yeah. each other. Yes. And when you mentioned earlier about Israel Martin Pokey and yeah. said that his talent in art, now I didn't know that about my cousin. I didn't know that. Wow. I, I knew he was multi talented some other, in a lot of other areas, like especially football. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he was talented <laughs> in football in track, you know, because yeah. I was a track team. Uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, he was academically smart as yes. well. So, uh, but our connection that I had mm -hmm. with, you know, which I, I've told Steve, you know, several times, was that uh, uh, art thing. I mean, I mean, Pokey was way more talented than I was with art. Uh, I mean, yeah. 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 And uh, 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 we had a talk about it. Uh, mm. He couldn't. He actually got a scholarship. To, I mean, so you know, just play football, yes. and, but because art is just as oh god, what is the word for it? It's it's just as demanding as football. He told me that he couldn't do both of them. Mm. So so he either had to play football or do art. Well, uh, and mm. and so we know that football, you know, uh, that was his ticket. Yes. So yeah, but no, he was uh, he was extremely he was yeah. extremely talented with art, and uh, um, uh, um, and so I'm picturing him right now uh, mm -hmm. if, or, uh, if he was here. Yes. And then he was still doing art. He would probably be phenomenal. At it. Phenomenal at it! Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love how you uh, exalt others as well, but that's your humble spirit. So, what can we look for in the future with we know about the three shows, the three exhibits that are currently, you know, in operation where we can go and see them and we do need to support. But what can we expect a little in the future for you? Well, if, if it's uh, continue working on a body of work that's positive. But uh, uh, I, but I'm also a portrait artist. A, I'm a full time portrait artist. Okay. And and. Uh, I am currently doing some work that I can't really, I, I, I can't show, but there, uh, but there is a piece that I did for the, um, it's called University of the South, which mm -hmm. is in Sewanee, Tennessee. I painted 
the portrait of the first black vice chancellor. Wow, that so is amazing. First, Thank you. Think the first black vice chancellor at that university. And uh, I was so honored. That was my second portrait, you know, uh, to do for them. So I was mm -hmm. just honored that, you know, that they picked me because there was, that, there's a lot of great artists out there, you know, that they could have pulled. Uh, um, uh, and so that that's one thing. But I'm also doing something else that I can't really talk about. <laughs> Um, He's still working on it, guys. He can't disclose it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's all this unveiling stuff yes. know, that you that, uh, that they want to do. That's how come I haven't been able to show the vice chancellor's portrait. Yes. Uh, because it be in October. There's sometimes during that time. Wow. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And we know that if they asked you back, a second time, then that means that they enjoyed what you were producing, what you put out. Yes, definitely. And so we're going to be looking out for that, which you can't disclose to us because we know that has to be really yeah. good. <laughs> but I will share on, on Facebook as soon as I could release it. Thank I you. And I don't mind sharing it because that page, uh, Free Little Little, is set up for individuals like yourself to post positive things. As long as it's positive and it's doing some great impact in someone's life, then it can be posted on a page. And I, yes, I posted uh, things. Uh, that's right. That's all it I is. Do. I have great uh, work that you're doing. Great body of work. Great work. Great, great artwork. Every piece that I've seen, let me stress this for those who have not seen his work. And I encourage you to find these, these um, galleries that's in Houston and go and see his work for yourself. Beautiful work. It looks real. It looks right. like I can touch and speak to that person. You just right. make it so lifelike. Um, when did you see that your work was receiving those types of comments? And then you notice you heard people say, wow, that looks almost like that person is alive on that canvas. Well, I I think that I got on Facebook maybe when 22, maybe six years ago. Wow. Re Reggie had been telling me, man, people need to see your work. But I wasn't big in social media. At all. Yeah. Um, I just did work just for the love of it. Um, uh, I, I didn't even care if I sold it. Mm. I didn't even care. It's just the love of this doing it, and I've done a lot of free stuff. A lot of. Free stuff. <laughs> uh, I know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, so it really, once I start showing on social media, and then people start showing you love, that you can almost get addicted. You know, you like, oh man, they really like my work. Wow. Because as an artist, to be honest with you, uh, we are some of the most insecure people you ever want to meet. I, I mean, you never think good your work. Your work is never good enough, and and then some. Some of it comes from uh, well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you with being with 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 the upbringing. You feel like you're just never good enough. Hmm. Okay. Well, you okay. are beyond good enough. Let me say that publicly to you. Your Thank work is amazing. Thank you. We sincerely love it. You just had a beautiful comment said you need to look twice at it. And I agree with Greg because every time you, you complete a work, I'm like, wow. It almost looked like that's a, a life life. That's what I described it as. Um, finished product. Yes. Right. And, uh, and what I've learned is to trust the process. So yes. come on, talk I about that. I don't I don't rush anything. I take my time and uh, you have to get it the way you want it. So sometimes sometimes you can reach your goal. Sometimes it's it's tough, but, uh, but there's other factors that play into an artist not getting the success off of every single, you, you won't be with the tale that I didn't make it there, but I can. Sometimes, uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes some people can, but sometimes 
you're working on some work and and um you just find a comfortable spot to stop that's all that's all you do you just i've exhausted everything i think that i've done all i can for this portrait so um or this painting mm -hmm. so so i just set it aside and um and, and then actually sometimes sometimes set it aside and uh, just leaving it you know for some, you know for like a week or two or maybe even three weeks so I mean, i've had one painting that's had for a whole year because mm -hmm. i just figured it out you know but you have to trust your process so whatever that is whatever that is you know you trust it and uh uh, uh you will come up with something <laughs> Something. That's actually great advice, though, to just yeah. trust the process, take a look at it, set it to the side, and come back to it. I mean, that's, that's you. probably why your work is so great, because <laughs> you're not rushing it. Yeah, I says, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I go to uh, portrait conferences, and I see some artists that just have the gift. They can just whip it out. Well, God, God gave us each a different way of handling things. So for me, I mean, sometimes things do happen spontaneously. Sometimes things take time. They take time yeah. to produce, you know. So, so if you trust your process, you'll be just fine. Mm, I totally concur with you on that. And we're going to agree that you have trust the process multiple times continuously because we see it, it the, the body of work that you have put out is just beautiful that's all i can say it's beautiful it shows your gifts and your talents they definitely came from god because as greg said and i'm totally agreeing not only we don't trust the process we can see the passion that goes into your work because if you take a photo and put it next to your work again it looks lifelike it's it's almost, it's identical. It is identical because every stroke. Right. Yeah. Well, I would love to talk about that just a little bit from an artist. Please, thing. please share. So, uh, because it's hard to talk about it when you're on social, you can't explain, mm -hmm. but my process is actually less is more. So if mm -hmm. I have from a photo, or or actually paint from life which i paint people sitting for me all the time from life okay i i try to suggest things or or try to only put what's important to tell their stories so even though i may have this photo if you were to see my paintings in mm -hmm. life you would see that there's a big difference between it and the photo because there's because wow. there's an imprint that the artist leave in it with brush strokes, you know, which, you know, which helped to tell the story, you know, it's your own personal signature, you know, within mm -hmm. that, you know, whether it's pencil marks, you know, charcoal marks, uh, 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 uh paint strokes, uh, I mean, paint brush strokes, mm -hmm. the, the goal is not to copy the photo. The goal is to make it feel three-dimensional, make it feel like the person, get the characteristics of that person. Yes. With as simple use of detail as you can. So I look to minimize detail mm. and execute uh, form. Uh, 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 digging for personality, you know, digging, uh, 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 digging for character, getting a feeling of that person. So, with saying that, that's kind of how I think about when I'm painting somebody, whether it's from life or from a photo. Most of the time, when I do portraits from a photo, they they are posthumous portraits. And I hmm. those as a portrait committee. Okay. Uh, yes. So you definitely have enlightened us. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I, I, I mean, art is is. There's a lot of stuff. It's it's just 
so much more that I have to learn. Yeah. It, it's so much. I, the more you, the longer you study art, the more you realize you really don't know that much. Oh, wow. I, I get that. I get what you're saying yeah. on that. Yes, yeah. I do. Yes. Yeah. You come across some great people and, mm -hmm. and, uh, but you always have to, I mean, if you work for a long time though, you always have your own process. I may grab something from somebody, but I still do me. You have to do you. And I teach that way. I like that. I teach that where you have to learn to do you whatever that is, you know, you do you, but, and you trust your process as you go along. Amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. So you learn as you go and, but that keeps you humble also because yeah. you don't say, Oh, I'm perfect. That worked with. And then I like the fact that you really are a perfectionist because I'm listening to a lot of things that you stated and say, well, I'll put this to the side or that stroke. You get really into your painting, which I think most artists do. You, there's a passion. You wouldn't be doing it if it, if it was not a, coming from a place of a passionate exactly. heart. You have a passionate heart. I'm really admiring the fact that you try to get the character. You capture that. Well, let me let you know, you nailed it. You capture Thank whatever you. that is that your goal was. Thank we you. see that the end result is excellence. That's what I'm going to say today. It's excellence. You capture Thank that. We can see the work that you've put into it. Thank you. Yes, it does. It does. Is there anything you want to share with us? I mean, I, we know we can't get you to tell us, you know, what you're working on, but that's okay. We're going to see it in time. We're going to trust your process. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I would, I would, I would, I would love to, you know, to show it, to show it now, but, uh, but you know, but they, they want me to keep it under wraps and, uh, Sometimes, sometimes uh, I'm good at that. Sometimes I'm like, man, I sure would love to show that right now. <laughs> but I, I don't do it. Uh, uh, you know, I kind of hold back on it. So. Yes. Let me ask, what was the greatest work or piece of art, your masterpiece that you've looked at and you say, wow, that I did not see this end result. I mean, I know I was going to, you know, finalize it, but wow, that was amazing. That impressed me. Have you ever had that experience? Well, you have them, but then they stay very brief. It's very brief. So, so you fall in love with this one piece and then mm -hmm. to your next one and you want that one to be better than the one you just finished. So if it happens... Yeah be the next one you're like oh man i think i did i think i did pretty good on this one but there's still some areas um uh, uh that you know you know that i could hit you know uh on the next painting and so you just you just keep trying you keep trying you know some sometimes i mean i don't know if any painting i i i, I well i can tell you what bobby's mm -hmm. painting I was there. Yeah. There's some technical things that I did in there that that I was very proud of, and then I intentionally did those technical things in there. Mm -hmm. I, I was just trying to implement some of the strategies that I've learned from some other artists, and then also some strategies that I've learned from painting from life. Mm. So you know, so there's a lot of stuff you see that's in paintings that you can't see with the naked eye. Meaning that when you paint from life, there's a lot of stuff that you won't see, but you may see some of the hyper-realist paintings to, to where things, they put everything in. Mm -hmm. And so remember, I'm the, the painting from life is my teacher at this point. So if I see it, then I put it. If I handle this edge, or that is different, I would try to implement those techniques, you know, that I'm seeing when I'm painting from life. And and for the people that don't know what pain from life is, mm -hmm. you know, uh we ain't explain it to us. <laughs> the, well, when you have a model mm -hmm. in the front of you and you're looking at that model 
and you're painting strictly from that model, uh, the, uh, it could be three hours, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 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 it could be two hours, whatever you're paying that model to do, because the model has to, uh, I mean, most of the time you pay them to sit for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, there's nothing more, there's nothing better than painting from observation, painting from somebody sitting in the front of you. Okay. Nothing, nothing better. For an artist to learn fundamentals. Excellent. That, now that's good. That was some great wisdom that you just dropped on us. We needed to hear that. So yeah. that inspires you a little bit more because you're capturing that right in front of you. Oh my God. The live oh. the feeling of painting somebody breathing, sitting, and you having a and you having dialogue with them. And it's not going to be perfect because. I mean, humans will not sit still. You know, we won't sit. I don't care how how much of a great model you are. Mm -hmm. It's it's tough to sit because I've sat and I've fallen asleep on on, on oh, the one of the worst models ever. I I am not <laughs> that, but the the I get real excited when uh, mm -hmm. when model and then I get to paint someone that I could talk to or have a dialogue with because they're studies they they mm -hmm. all they're studies so you just you paint them like i can if you ever have the opportunity i i have a stack of studies you yeah. know of the models and i just I set them aside you know they they not really for sale or anything mm -hmm. i just will hold on to them you know because it's it's because I use them as reference, you know, just thinking about what I saw. So, you know, this is what I saw. So let me try this on my next big project. So how often would you say that things change? Is it like a new skill that you, you've seen or someone taught you? And you say, you know what, because we said you, you did say earlier, you stated earlier that you do something different for the next one because you want to be better right. at it. Right. So... It's sometimes you don't see, you don't, you, it's in, it's in such small increments mm -hmm. that's the way you don't even see anything that you've done. Really? I, I mean, sometimes you can't see it. Sometimes it's, you know, you get a little bit frustrated and, and I, I, I mean, because you can't see, you know, other people, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, uh, but it, 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 it comes, so you have to be, I'm 40 years in on it. Oh, that's a long time. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 40 years in with painting period, just painting, mm -hmm. whether it's landscapes, still lives or portraits. And even being 40 years in, there's still so much to learn. Wow. With, and then I'm not just talking about the portraits. I'm just talking about the use of your medium, you know, whether it's lands, mm -hmm. um, a uh, um, uh, uh, still life, or even apps, uh, any type, any mm -hmm. type of art like that. Yeah, yeah. It just, you just keep learning and you just keep pushing. So you keep developing. And the reason I'm asking those type of questions, because I know that what, what? you see is different than what we see. Right, exactly. And you basically explain that throughout your entire uh, interview, that what you see and how you even approach that project, you know, what kind of excites you about doing it. So I'm glad you shared all those tips with us. So if we had a, a youngster, male or female, and we say, I'm going to, to teach. I know you're teaching currently now. So what is the age that you work with uh, youth or do you work with youth well, at all? And done, but for for for, I taught at Galveston College for ten years, mm -hmm. and so I recently just finished up there. You know, because I want to focus more in the Houston area, so mm -hmm. I, I want to focus on portraiture more, which is what the glass sale uh, is. Let me. So the mm -hmm. age can vary. You know, it could be as young as eighteen on up. Uh, uh, but uh, but they are requiring that you have a painting course before you enter. A portrait class. Uh, portraiture is one of the hardest, and 
it's one of the hardest uh, uh, genre of paintings. I, I mean, whenever you go to portrait, you really need to know everything. Yeah. I, I mean, you really need to, that you should have at least, well, well, two things. Uh, you must know your craft. Yes. And try to become an all around painter, meaning you paint landscapes, you paint still life. You do other things than just paint just portrait. Uh, and and so to become efficient in those things, you know, that's the goal. You know, I, I mean, and especially learn your medium first, you know, uh, uh, which is if you're using oil, if you're using pastel, if you're using if you're using char anything you're using, you know, you have to understand that medium first. So the age group that I start with normally is from 18 and on up. I I tried, no, I was asked when I taught at Texas City High, only one semester, uh, the teacher from the middle school wanted to come to the high school, so they were going to send me over to the middle to block her. <laughs> Did you say that wasn't gonna happen, huh? <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm uh, actually not that. Kind. I'm, I'm very serious with the craft, and yes. uh, if I get people that's not as serious, then mm -hmm. it's hard to accept at this particular time in my life. Maybe when I was a little younger. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's, it's, it's you know, it's a push. Wow. Well, Eddie, I want to do two things before we wrap it up. One, we want to acknowledge that you currently have some work. I think you told me three pieces at Neo Culture in Galveston, Texas. So if you've yep. never seen anything Eddie has done, there is a location right in Galveston, Texas that you can go and view his work. And I know it's excellent. I, I love what I've seen from you. I talked to Sam Collins, so hopefully okay. I can do a live demonstration at the oh, that would be great. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. I definitely want to make that. But I, but I have. I'm going to put that date up again, August the 20th. I wish we had yeah. the the exact address, but that's okay. I'll put it on my page. People can follow. I'll tag you in it uh, once you give me all the details of that because we okay. do need to support you. You're Galveston owned. We appreciate you and what you're doing. We understand Houston gives you that opportunity in the galleries that are there. And so we, we support that. But what is your wisdom nugget for someone who is an aspire, inspiring artist, uh, whether it's abstract or paintings or portrait? Or anything to do. Anything I think, with that. I think first learn the fundamentals, and uh, 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 which is, I mean, just, they're just learning to draw basic shapes and just observe observe from life more so what mm -hmm. i'm saying is just draw anything you see okay that's a good that's good leaves the photographs alone because they're flat <laughs> okay Take, draw or just draw if you're young just get a pencil just draw your mom dad a, you know you know a can flower in it. <laughs> okay and you spend as much time doing that and you should feel fill your portfolio up with drawings uh that's beautiful try to draw something every day you know 15 20 minutes and uh and then as you move along continue that study but also uh, uh yeah you will develop your own process which is what we talked about once you develop that Trust it and remember, hey, this is the way that I do things, you know, yes. and don't anybody expedite what you're trying to do. Sometimes you have to expedite some portraits, but but it's very, very still, you know, because I mm -hmm. in it and then look at it. You know, this one that I'm doing now, which which you know, which is for New York. The date was Congrats. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. The date was yes. close and 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 then I call crying and say, hey, is it which is back because I want to give them. Some, it's going into a pretty good area next to some pretty heavy hitters, so I don't want mm. the only one sitting up there, you know, with a bad, you know, with a bad painting up there. 
that is not going to ever happen with you. Right. Your passion is all over every piece that I've seen. And I know that others on the line here can attest that your work is excellent. You're in right. the right place. You're in the right vein. Um, we're happy. We're proud yeah. in Thank Galveston you. of your achievements and look for further future achievements, goals oh. to be met. Class of 84. So, so anyway, for my Come opening. Come on, class of 84. <laughs> for my opening, I was so honored to have classmates come through. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, classmates and friends. And then, awesome. and then also, Coach Drones came through for both open. Yes, that's, now that's uh, awesome when your instructors come through, especially your coaches, yes. Oh, <laughs> I so much respect for my high school coaches. They were all, they were, I'm going to tell you something. They, back then, they helped to build men. Yes, come on, talk they, about they, it. They, they yes. helped to build men, so I have so much respect for Coach Drones, Coach Holmes, Coach Umberhe, and all those coaches. Coach Ben mm -hmm. Mack. Wow. If we had time, I could tell you <laughs> uh, my character. Uh, I was I was trying to tell him what he did for me. In the eighth grade, I was a trainer. Just let me tell you. In the eighth grade, right there, I, I was a trainer at Central. Huh? And he let me hold his money before every track meet. Hmm. Called me heavy. And he would always say, I, remember I, <laughs> I don't worry about my money. Heavy not going to let none happen. What that did for me was that built trust. Hmm. Ever since then, because of him, yeah. I don't take nothing from anybody. I do not. I he. I, I'm gonna break it down to the basics. I I wouldn't steal nothing from nobody because he trusted me. Yes, bold people. So yeah. I tried to tell him that before he passed away, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 he had no idea that he mm -hmm. to mold me. Yes, beautiful as, as I am today, Coach Ben. Man, I, it's I mean, a blessing. Blessing. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for sharing that touching story. You you have me. I, I, I love to hear stories like that because I, I have something that I can't disclose right now that's going to happen for Galveston soon. And it really is about that. The people who have impacted my life and, and yeah. just, you know, I've learned something and I'm going to say this and you can attest to it. Like you said, you tried to tell him that. But there are people who have no idea the magnitude the impact that they've made on our lives. Yeah. And that's and true. I want to be those that make the, the positive impact, but there that's are some good positive people. Some have gone on, some are still here that I can say that about, but there are some things that need to be acknowledged and it's, it's time. It's leaning in that direction. So maybe you and I can get together and collaborate. Cause I'm sure it's other, you, you named a few that's still here. Oh Give them their flowers. Give them their flowers. I was able to do that with with um with Cooney, you know, because some people entrust you, like you say, you they entrust you with things, and that builds you. So yes, thank you for right. sharing that. Someone needed to hear that. Someone needed to hear that they were not forgotten. Exactly, they were not forgotten of their positive impact on your life. Exactly. Thank you for sharing. And yes, you come back. You come back on this show. We know you're busy. Actually, I, I, actually, what I can do, if you wanted, I could actually, um, next time I come back, I could I could show some works. Please do. Please so, do. Personal works. You know, none of these portrait commission things. But. <laughs> no, we understand. I understand. One day, my prayer for you is that you and Danny get to do something together. Yes. I really would love that. He's coming on Thursday. He's coming on Thursday. I love Danny Simmons. I love what he's stand for. Yeah, he's, yes, he's, yes. he's a cool person as well. So two I, good people, come on. Right. <laughs> look, look, Greg said, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, you know, as I talked about with art, art is art, art is very sensitive. Mm. 
art, art. So, you know, people love what they love. Yes. They and love uh, they love. that's, that is totally understandable. So, uh, mm -hmm. and then I respect all, you know, in the area because my college mentor was an abstract artist, yes. Mr. John Cobalt. He's my mentor today still. See? And, uh, and, and uh, so he got me at the tender age of, of 18 at Galveston College. And, uh, wow. That means a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It means a lot. Have somebody you can even, I, I mean, you can go to and then ask them questions when you don't know. Mm, and that's what I'm talking uh, about. Artists to call me. And uh, if they call me, actually, I have, I, I, I'm, I've tutored privately quite a few artists, and mm. and they still call me like I still call my mentor John. That's Cobalt. what it's about. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. I'm exactly. so grateful for mine. I am. I am. And uh, we become we become better when we have someone we can go to. And oh, go ahead. Go ahead. This your platform. I cannot. <laughs> I love mentor. Mr. Harold Mason. <laughs> come on, come on, give credit what credit is due. Other mentor out, Mr. Harold Mason. So you know he calls me that he calls me his teacher now, but that's oh, not. that that's so sweet. That's so honorable. Oh, you no, know, he, uh, he's quite talented. Eddie, thank you. Your heart is so beautiful that I am honored. Even the more that you said yes, that the Lord said it's time for him to tell his story. And you shared with us some very Thanks. intimate details of your life, uh, even from being insecure as an artist, you know, to being humbled, really, because that's a humble spirit to me that you just want to make sure. Wow. They said that about my work and just how you have throughout this entire interview. You have spoken others names and oh, given them. Uh, see, that's a person that's humble. That's a person I can ride with all day long because it's not about them. And yeah, that's hey. what this show is about for you to come on. You share some wonderful, really heartfelt stories of your friends and how you came about. And I'm just so honored. So, again, you know, you have an open invitation to come back on, share with Thank us anytime. Just say, hey, Free, I, I got some things I want to share with the public that I'm doing or invite us out to some of the events. We know about August the 20th and then get with Mr. Collins so that you can do something, you know, in Galveston. I, I know I love your work. Oh, and, and so it'll be on an art walk weekend. So he said yes. the best is on a come Saturday. On. So... I teach at the Glassell on mm -hmm. Saturday. Hopefully, I can make a time, you know, uh, uh, that I can be there for a Saturday for maybe three hours. And then hopefully, I can get a model and so people could see okay. me paint some life, you know, which is, which is much more interesting that way. You just let us know. You let us know. Oh. In the class of 84. The oh. <laughs> I know you want to give them some more credit. <laughs> uh, well, well, uh, well, 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 I want to thank the class of 84, but I cannot leave out the class of 82. Neil Strada and, okay. his, and his daughter came out to my second opening and oh. I appreciated that with Coach Drones and everything. And, and, uh, and uh, it, uh, it was great seeing Neil, you know, because, I play football with Neil, and uh, we go we go we go way way back too. So so yeah. So I want to thank Neil. And, That's so beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, yes. Well, eighty two had good people too. Delon Lockett. That's my cousin. Her and Joe. <laughs> with Carl yeah. Hill, all of them. With Randy and Carl, too. him too. <laughs> I love all those guys. Wow. Yes, you 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 are a beautiful person inside and out, and so is your lovely wife. So it Thanks. is easy for people to love you, even though you're in the class of 84. The best class of Bow High is 86, but oh. we still love 84. <laughs> oh. You're my sister Valicia or classmates. Yes. Valicia, Mitchell, but Burns now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I'm just so glad that you came on. Thank you. Come back. 
let us know the next show and whenever there is an update just send it to me we'll post it and let everybody know to support you so again thank you for coming on the show i'm glad Very well. you're giving this opportunity to just share with us and i like the process that you brought us through so we're going to sign out together thank you guys thank you for everyone he named you, you mean so much to him and those who have even gone on, he acknowledged them, his old coaches, his mentors, his class of 84, and just others that have impacted his life, more importantly, his beautiful wife so yeah. and family. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to Simply Free. This is Galveston Feature. Galveston, we are watching you. We want to see more greatness and those that are doing positive and making great impact like Mr. Eddie here. You are featured on Galveston Feature. Be blessed. Thank you, everybody.